So what can you tell me about growing up in Louisiana and, and learning the blues down there? Oh, man. Well, growing up in Louisiana, I feel really fortunate. I feel very blessed to have come um, from the city that I'm from, man, because, you know, Shreveport, Louisiana, isn't necessarily, uh, you know, when you think of Louisiana, you normally first, the city for, that you think of first is New Orleans, you know. Uh, but Shreveport has a very rich musical history uh, if you kind of dig in and, uh, you know, research it a little bit. Um, all the way back to, uh, as far as the blues goes, a lot of those guys uh, of the early days of the Delta Blues and stuff like that traveled up to Shreveport, spent time performing there, and, uh, you know, making their way up to St. Louis or to Chicago. Uh, one of the uh, most obvious examples is Lead Belly, um, who actually, my first album was named in honor of him, was called Lead Better Heights, and there's a part of town right outside of downtown Shreveport called Lead Better Heights, which is basically uh, dedicated to him. They got a statue and everything of him, because he spent a lot of time in his life and in his career performing down there. Um, and he had a real impact on the area, and he's actually buried not too far outside of town, and in my 10 Days Out documentary, we actually went to Lead Belly's gravesite, uh, kind of pay tribute to him and and the history that uh, Louisiana appreciates, you know, of him being there. But you get the idea. It was like we could get in the car and head down the road and go see just about any kind of music that we really wanted to see. And uh, I feel like that really played a huge influence um, in me at an early age and the kind of um, music that I wanted to play. Uh, and also, I mean, you know, in my playing, it's like, yeah, I love to do the blues, and a lot of people call me a blues guitar player. But I feel like I'm a musician first and foremost, and I love to play all kinds of music. I just prefer to really rock out on the blues, you know. Um, but I mean, you know, I, I got a lot of rhythmic chops from James listening to James Brown records, you know. Now you started playing guitar at age seven. Well, I actually remember like I actually remember uh, playing my first notes on a toy guitar. Um, my grandmother back in the day, some of you older people out there may remember this. They had this. Thing hey, hey, uh, it was like a gro <laughs> it's like a grocery store and they had I think they called it S and H green stamps or whatever, right? <laughs> and so depending on how much money you would spend there, they'd give you all these green stamps and you fill up these booklets and then you go back and get free stuff, you know. And so they had these toy plastic guitars with nylon strings and I probably went through twelve of those things when I was a kid, and I actually learned my first notes on one of those toy guitars uh, when I was probably like four or five years old. But I got my first real guitar at age seven, which was six months after I got to meet Stevie Ray Vaughan for the first time. Wow. And then is that when you knew? Well, I didn't know. I mean, I, I never knew, man. I remember, um, you know, being a kid, man, and looking at all my heroes and on the cover of the guitar magazines and going, wow, I wonder what, that must be amazing to do that, you know. I never, ever thought, really, that it would become a reality for myself. Um, it was just like a dream, you know, but the dream is what motivated me. And, um, you know, I, I remember when I had all these record companies approaching me uh, to sign a record deal. And I remember, and my dad will never forget it because he brings it up, but I was 15 or uh, just about to turn 16 and all the major labels were calling and, you know, basically pounded down the door wanting to sign me. And uh, my dad was like, man, this is great. It's like, you got all these guys that want to sign you and stuff. And we were actually about to do a deal uh, which ended up being my deal with Irving Azoff and Giant Records. And he was like, man, dude, you know, this is going to happen. This is awesome. And I just looked at him and I was like, he's like, why, you, why aren't you excited? And I was like, well, I'll get excited as soon as the ink is on the line. You know what I mean? <laughs> so I was like, I was still up until that point. It wasn't a reality to me, you know, and it's still I kind of have to pinch myself every once in a while. Now, I read that your first gig was, uh, was it Brian Lee? Uh, yeah, well, well, my first time on stage, I was 13 years old. Uh, again, it was one of our trips. We would always go down to New Orleans and like spend the weekend down there and go see live music. And my dad had been down, uh, and my dad actually turned me on to Brian Lee. Uh, my dad went down once, checked him out, bought his cassette. Uh, that's how long ago that was. And brought it back to me, and, and I totally immersed myself in Brian's music. And so then he was like, well, let's go down and check him out. So we went down to Bourbon Street. He was playing at a place called the Old Absinthe House Bar. And that was uh, historically the oldest... Uh, bar on Bourbon Street, and uh, it was a really cool place. They actually turned it into a daiquiri store now, uh, which kind of sucks. There was a lot of people that were not very happy about that. But anyways, we went down there. I was 13 years old, right in the middle of Bourbon Street. You want to come in? Come on in. You know, it's like n no ID necessary. There was like, there's no problem. If you're 13, 7 years old, it doesn't matter on Bourbon Street. 
So they let me in, and then uh, somebody approached Brian and, and asked him if I could sit in uh, with his band. And I was really nervous because I'd never been on stage or played in public before, and I wasn't really sure what was going to happen. And he agreed, but he was kind of like, his attitude was, yeah, he can play, but I want, he can do two songs, and then that's it, because this is, this is my show, and you know I'm doing my thing here. So I got up and did two songs, and I got ready to take my guitar off and, and get off the stage, and he was like, no, 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 don't go anywhere. <laughs> and uh, I ended up playing like the rest of the night. Like I played till 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning that evening, because he was playing like six-hour, six-hour-long sets. And I played all the rest of the sets, man. I got standing ovations and all this stuff. And I was like, yeah, I was hooked, man. That was it. That's when I knew <laughs> that I was going to do whatever, man. I didn't know how far it would go, but I knew that I was going to have a band and I was going to be playing on stage. 